Has the era of tanks come to an end? Have tanks, in the age of drones, really become expensive and useless hunks of metal? For over a century, tanks have dominated the battlefield and played a decisive role in breaking through enemy defenses, serving as the main striking force of ground troops during offensives. Leading tank-building nations spent billions on their development and modernization. Protection and firepower increased, fire control systems were automated, and other technologies appeared, significantly improving efficiency and expanding the combat capabilities of these armored vehicles. Having a sufficient number of next-generation main battle tanks has always been a source of pride for any army in the world, and a clear indicator of its military power. Welcome to our channel! Today, we'll try to figure out what lies ahead for tanks in the near future, given the current trends in modern warfare. What's happening with tanks today isn't unique. In almost every historical period, there were types of troops that once ruled the battlefield, until they didn't. In the Middle Ages, that role belonged to knights. Maintaining knights was extremely costly, since they were essentially hereditary professional soldiers. Just think about it. Expensive weapons, expensive armor, expensive horses of specific breeds. A horse that plows a field is not fit for a tournament or a battle. But the era of knights came to an end. The first signal came at the Battle of Agincourt, which took place in 1415 during the Hundred Years' War. Despite their numerical superiority, the French heavy cavalry was simply shot down by English longbowmen with their large, powerful bows. The flower of French chivalry was destroyed by the English. And this happened nearly a hundred years before gunpowder weapons like the arquebus, the forerunner of the modern rifle, became widespread in Europe. Different types of troops replaced the knights. There were musket infantry regiments, cannons, machine guns, and chemical weapons. If we talk about World War I, that's exactly when tanks first appeared. But they didn't have time to reveal their full potential yet. That happened only during World War II. However, armed conflicts of the past decade have made many people reconsider the role of tanks in modern warfare. After all, the entire evolution of tanks has essentially been one long standoff between armor and anti-tank weapons. And it seems, tanks are losing that fight. Modern anti-tank systems can destroy a highly expensive tank quite quickly. That's why debates over whether the tank era is over are getting more intense. So, is there still a future for heavy armored vehicles? Or are they destined to go the way of the armored train, once the most fearsome weapon of the Russian Civil War? For the viewer's convenience, we'll first present the facts against tanks, then the facts in favor, and finally draw our own conclusion on whether tanks will remain on the battlefield or if their time has truly passed. Let's begin. The tank is a very complex and expensive weapon. Its development involves dozens of design bureaus and research institutes. Its production requires a long chain of factories. Many of its units, systems, and assemblies require high-tech, sometimes even unique equipment. The production cycle is long and demands well-coordinated work across all related industries. A tank is material-intensive. It requires rare alloys, special materials, and so on. Tank prices are constantly rising. For example, the Russian T-90M in export version costs about $5 million and is considered relatively cheap. The British Challenger II in its latest modification is approaching $7 million, which by modern standards is also not especially expensive. The American Abrams, South Korean K-2 Black Panther, and French AMX-56 Leclerc have all gone well beyond the $10 million mark, and that's not the limit. We have a separate video on this topic. Top 10 most expensive tanks in the world as of 2025. Tanks also require skilled personnel for maintenance and repair, availability of spare parts, and specially equipped repair facilities. Let's not forget that training a good crew under normal conditions for a modern tank takes at least six months. As tanks become more advanced and better protected, their mass and size also increase. This reduces their tactical mobility, since nowadays they're transported not under their own power but by trailers or rail to preserve their service life. The heavier and larger the vehicle, the harder it is to transport. Engines with over 1,000 horsepower are no longer rare, but they consume enormous amounts of fuel. 
Supplying them with fuel is no easy task either. If the enemy manages to cut tanks off from resupply, they quickly turn into immobile metal blocks. You don't even need to destroy them. Crews will abandon or blow them up themselves. At the same time, tanks have never been invulnerable. They are well protected in the frontal projection and relatively well protected on the sides, but highly vulnerable from above. The armor on the top of the tank is much thinner. A hit from a shaped charge or sufficiently powerful high-explosive munition dropped from above will disable the tank without fail. ATGMs, anti-tank guided missiles of the third generation, and especially unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, have made tanks almost defenseless as they attack from the top. Systems like the Javelin, Spike, and n Yabu destroy tanks in about 90% of launches at practical ranges. Compared to tanks, ATGMs are relatively inexpensive. Depending on the version, the cost ranges from $150,000 to $250,000. If you consider that training an ATGM crew takes no more than two months, and for simpler systems, even a week, then you realize a soldier with minimal training can disable or destroy a complex, expensive enemy machine with a cheap weapon. Let's draw a historical parallel. Take the German Maus tank, which Hitler wanted to put into mass production in the last years of World War II. That tank would have been an easy target for Soviet or Allied aircraft. And that's exactly how modern ATGMs and drones look at any tank today. Even more dangerous than ATGMs are drones, which always attack from the upper hemisphere. Wars in Syria, Libya, Nagorno-Karabakh, the Arab-Israeli conflict, and the Russia-Ukraine war, all of today's conflicts, are filled with UAVs being used daily. They are even more effective than ATGMs, especially FPV drones equipped with cameras. These are very high-precision weapons. A drone costing under $1,000 can destroy a multi-million dollar tank with no problem. FPV drones are even cheaper and can be produced in large quantities. They are platoon-level weapons, capable of hitting pinpoint targets at ranges up to 10 kilometers. Any infantry platoon can now be equipped with them. They're lightweight and compact. One Jeep can carry five times more drones than ATGMs. That means a single unit can threaten an entire battalion of tanks. Strike UAVs attack all kinds of ground targets. They suppress firing positions. They can take out infantry hiding in trenches. They often take over functions that used to belong to tanks. Let's not forget reconnaissance UAVs either. With their appearance, even howitzer artillery has become a relatively precise weapon, capable of targeting vehicles far beyond the front line. Overall, UAVs are beginning to dominate the battlefield and will likely force ground forces underground in the near future. It will soon be impossible to survive above ground under constant attack from agile, all-seeing drones controlled remotely by operators in bunkers. There's also an important economic factor. Any weapon must inflict damage that far exceeds its own cost. Otherwise, it becomes ineffective and will be discarded. Cheaper weapons that can be produced quickly and in large quantities tend to replace more expensive ones with longer production cycles. Combat UAVs, despite their effectiveness, are simple to operate and so cheap that they can be mass-produced. They are now in service even with small, low-income countries. A tank, on the other hand, is a weapon for an elite club, nations that have the ability to develop a large-scale defense industry. Defending tanks and other heavy vehicles from UAVs is becoming increasingly difficult. It feels like they may soon be completely pushed out by cheap, simple, and precise drone weapons. And these aren't just opinions. For example, Belgium has already completely abandoned tanks. Similar trends can be seen in the United Kingdom, where they're already discussing replacing main battle tanks with various types of modern light-armored vehicles. However, in many countries, tanks are still being developed and built, bringing forth a new generation of armored vehicles. So why aren't militaries rushing to abandon them completely? Because simply put, you can bomb a territory to dust with aviation, missiles, artillery, and rocket systems. But you cannot clear it of enemy forces and establish full control until your troops physically occupy the ground. There is still no alternative to the boots-on-the-ground concept and likely won't be anytime soon. And when human soldiers are on the battlefield, they must be protected by armor. 
so we cannot do away with armored vehicles altogether. This fact is no longer up for debate. The next question is, why are tanks still considered the best type of armored vehicle, both in defense and offense? The answer is simple. No other armored vehicle possesses the combination of combat qualities that a tank does. 1. Firepower Tanks carry main guns ranging from 105 to 130 mm, often complemented by anti-tank missiles, heavy and standard machine guns. The time from target detection to destruction for a tank is significantly shorter than for most other weapon systems, including missile launchers. This armament allows tanks to fight other armored vehicles and destroy serious fortifications effectively. 2. Protection Tanks are the most heavily protected ground vehicles. They're designed with high passive protection from the start, multi-layered composite armor, spaced construction elements, and so on. This is then enhanced by active protection systems, such as reactive armor, dynamic armor mounted on top of the main protection, active countermeasures like interceptor projectiles fired at incoming threats. Unlike lighter armored vehicles, tanks can withstand fire from automatic cannons and grenade launchers. In direct combat, a tank will almost always defeat any lighter vehicle with less robust protection. Today, the tank remains the most powerful and effective assault weapon, capable of breaking through fortified defenses and clearing a path for infantry. Third, psychological impact. Tanks also provide powerful psychological support to ground troops. Soldiers feel much more confident moving behind a tank. Morale rises significantly. In Syria, according to Russian officers, infantry refused to leave the trenches without tank support. In Afghanistan, U.S. troops also reported that having tanks nearby greatly boosted their confidence. Let's look back at history again. Tanks have been declared dead more than once. Each time, it was because of a new anti-tank invention. The first time this happened was in the 1950s, with the appearance and rapid evolution of anti-tank guided missiles, ATGMs. The second time was about 20 years later, with the rise of attack helicopters and top-down strike weapons. Yet, tanks survived and even continued to evolve. Now, we face a new threat. Third-generation ATGMs and combat drones that strike tanks in their most vulnerable area, from above. Will these finally end the story of the tank? Most likely not. This is simply a new challenge, one that militaries are only just beginning to address. Yes, for now, the advantage lies with anti-tank weapons, but take Israel, for example. Here, the Trophy Active Protection System was not only developed, it was successfully tested in real combat. Trophy can detect an incoming missile and shoot it down mid-flight using a counter-missile. It effectively protects tanks from all known ATGMs, even javelins. Other new technologies include electro-optical jamming systems, which interfere with precision-guided weapons using laser or infrared targeting, multi-spectral camouflage, and new thermal coatings, which reduce a tank's visibility in the infrared spectrum making it harder for drones and IR-guided missiles to detect or track them. There's also progress in electronic warfare systems designed to counter FPV drones. Modern systems can detect a swarm, or a single drone, at a distance of 1.5 kilometers and jam them at up to 1 kilometer. The drones simply won't make it to the tank. Other systems are being developed to intercept even high-speed projectiles including armor-piercing kinetic rounds. All of this means active protection systems are dramatically increasing tank survivability. Even in the age of drones and loitering munitions, tanks are still not obsolete. These protective technologies will keep evolving and adapting to new battlefield realities. Because drones aren't some kind of magic weapon, they're not an ultimate solution that guarantees total battlefield dominance. They, too, have serious limitations. For example, FPV drones struggle in fog or when a smoke screen is deployed in time. Top-down protection is not a technical impossibility. It's a solvable engineering challenge. The process of adaptation and improvement is continuous. When armor became widespread, armor-piercing rounds were invented. When those were no longer effective, composite and spaced armor was introduced. Then came reactive and active protection systems. 
a countermeasure will be found for drones too. Just wait, you'll see grill cages and more. Both arguments, for and against tanks, have merit, and both are backed by solid reasoning. At the same time, neither side can claim absolute certainty. Tank supporters believe that, with constant improvement, tanks will retain their strengths, firepower, and protection. But passive armor has likely reached its limit. Only active protection systems, or even improvised measures like grill cages, can now make a real difference in survivability. However, such systems greatly increase the cost of already expensive tanks. Tanks are becoming ever more technologically complex, harder to operate, and more demanding to maintain. And since many are needed, their production and upkeep place a serious burden on any nation's military budget. On the other hand, improvised protection reduces combat effectiveness. Tank critics, meanwhile, often overlook one thing. Tanks still play a crucial role in warfare, and there is no true alternative when it comes to breaking through fortified enemy positions. Light-armored vehicles cannot replace them, simply because they're too vulnerable. They are better suited for rapid response units, quick raids, and mopping up operations against fragmented enemy resistance. But they are not fit for breakthrough operations against a well-prepared and entrenched enemy. Our personal opinion? Tanks won't lose their relevance anytime soon. Why do we think so? Because despite all their drawbacks, no other combat vehicle can do what tanks currently do. Perhaps we're on the brink of a new technological leap, a revolutionary design or concept. We've seen that before. After World War II, armies abandoned heavy breakthrough tanks and even super heavy tanks in favor of lighter vehicles that offered similar firepower, but with less mass and greater mobility. Today's main battle tanks have already surpassed World War II heavy tanks in weight, the very ones they replaced. So yes, we might be headed for another transformation. Friends, that's all for today, but we'll definitely see you in our next episodes. What do you think? Has the era of tanks ended, or will they remain on the battlefield for years to come? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You know exactly who would enjoy this video, share it with them. Until next time, stay curious.